Hi everybody, hi every spirit, welcome once again to my YouTube channel, Esoteric Cloud Surfer here, ready to start a tarot reading. This is my own unique style of tarot reading, it's the 12 houses, aka 360 tarot reading, and I will explain it to you how it works in a second. This is the reading for the moon quarter that goes from today, Sunday, until the next Saturday, alright? And it's more relevant because we're going to have the full moon in a few days. So keep par with the energies in the sky with this beautiful reading and let's get started. Before we start, check the links in the description down below to my link tree and my beautiful partner, Mistaria link tree as well. And you have their ways to support us on Patreon, Ko-Fi and donate via PayPal as well. And support here this YouTube channel with a like, a subscription and by hitting that notification bell. So, as I've said to you before, I developed this reading concept which fuses astrology with tarot and it's uh, simple but not complex. That's not the word I'm looking for. It's simple but detailed. Yeah, I think we can say that, all right? Because it gives you uh, simple information but in a specific area Okay, so it is detailed, but yet simple, because we have things more organized and clean. That's the whole point of us creating the 12 houses in the sky. Okay, so we can have better, more clear understandings of our experiences, right? So, we're going to pull 13 cards, right? One for the spiritual house, the zero, the start, the unique and original house. And then one for each 12 houses, 12 celestial gates, 12 constellations, 12 disciples, 12 months, so on and so on, right? And for one, for you, for the ones out there that are not too much into astrology, I'm going to explain briefly what the house uh, is a part of your life, because each house is a part of your life, and we, you're going to know which one each is. And uh, let's get started. Here, the house zero, it represents what your spirit is doing by himself, right? On its own space. And then every house is like a mirror, a reflection. That why, that's why I call it the you house. Because you start here, always, on your own space. And then you go into another space. You see life through a specific perspective, and then you come back to your space after you're reflecting. So you always make a you. So this is basically a flower, and many yous are like the different petals of the flower. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> so the card that comes out in that house is the. It represents what is the goal, the intention of your spirit. Because then your spirit will do these things, but they all share one common purpose, one common intentional right and so let's see what is our spirits or maybe no better what is the spirit of the being we live in doing right now during this moon quarter you're going to pass through the moon in for the full moon in cap all right and it's from today set uh, sunday and to the next saturday and we have a card let's go it is jupiter wheel of fortune so the spirit of the body, of the being that we live in, okay, the being that we live in is expanding, all right? The spirit, because the body is already dead, okay? But the spirit is expanding. The spirit is finding new ways, new wills to move into a new space. And it's actually very cool because the sun is in Cancer and Jupiter is exalted in Cancer and we're going to go through a full moon in Capricorn, which will be conjuncting Pluto, trining Uranus, and opposing the Sun. So we're going to see ways to expand and travel to new places, and we can also feel a connection, or we can find in the real world people, places, and things that support or represent those new changes, those new spaces, okay? So... Everything we're going to experience during this moon quarter, moon quarter is what I call the week, okay? I call it this moon quarter, you have four moon quarters, that's four weeks, that's a month, because we ain't weak, all right? 
So during this moon quarter, everything that you will experience in your life, around you and within you, is backed and supported by expansion, traveling and you creating a new will in order to travel. All right? We have our crystals over there, clear quartz, smoky quartz, black obsidian, chilling with us, you know. And let's see how those new ways to travel or th those new desires, it can be a new desire, all right? Or it can be a new way. If you already had a desire to travel to a new space, now you can create, oh, that's how I can do it. Or maybe you're already traveling and you'll be like, oh, I've been changing, I've been traveling, you know? You can come to those awareness or you can be like, oh shit, I have, I want to change, you know? And let's go to the first house. First house means or it represents or you experience in your, in your first house, your personality, personal insecurities and personal interests. So how the change, the will to travel will represent itself on your personality, personal interests, and your personal insecurities. By the way, guys, this is a service that you can have for yourself. I have a lot of tarot and astrological readings services. Just go to my IG and you can check them all. And you can access my IG by going into my link tree in the description down below and checking my IG. Then you can check the pricing and stuff or just email me using the email in the description down below as well. Let's go first house backed and supported by the wheel of change, fixed fire, queen of wands, all right? So, in your personal life and in your personality, there is the opportunity for you to receive great spiritual support, okay? You will, you will create new imaginations, new feelings, new visions, new potentials, new beliefs, new creative ideas that will support you or guide you or confirm those changes or those new places to go or those new ways to reach those places. So if you go and align yourself with those changes, you will receive great spiritual support. So the people, places and things around you might not support you directly or immediately, but you will attract spirits that be like, oh, you being individual, you changing, you want to move to a new place, we're going to help you. Take this vision, take this feeling, take this imagination, take this belief. So you can direct your personality into that travel, into that wheel of fortune. And that's why fortune is associated with treasure. Because when you move into a new place, you can also find new gems. Alright, so let's go into the second house. Second house deals with value and self-esteem so how you value yourself how you think the world values you how you value the world and how you value others values all right so how these changes will affect how you value yourself others the world you might have a gift or a talent how can, how do you how do you think the world values that gift as well okay so let's see how those changes, those travels, those new spaces to go, how are they going to affect you on your second house, the house of values? So we have a card for y'all and it is Aquarius, the star, okay? So <clears throat> the Taurus constellation was born out of the second house. So we have to learn, okay, how to value ourselves from a more global perspective, from a more detached and distant perspective. We have to learn how to value our individuality we have to learn how to value others' individuality. We have to learn how to value uniqueness, how to value others' uniqueness. You, 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 we have to learn how to value yourself 
because you gonna be a part of a constellation and in a constellation there is there is many stars and if you don't value yourself as a part of the constellation you might end up hating yourself hating the other stars you want to be the alpha star but that, that's not even the case okay this is aquarius everybody can be the alpha star at the right time at the right moment so you also need to value your learn how to value your skills in order to know the right time and space to act on those skills and gather enough attention okay so it's a learning process you have to be a bit more light learn how to be more light with your values learn how to be more unique more individual more free and claim authority over your values because we changing we going into new places and spaces and if you don't hold limits and boundaries to your values somebody might go in and use your values for their own benefit and leave you dry okay but also very important you you need to learn how to associate your values use your values to make yourself a part of something that caters to your individuality let's go i like that let's go into the third house that deals with your surroundings friends teachers the butcher man the fisherman the owner of the coffee over down the street you know how are we going to experience those new changes the will to change those new ways to change those new ways to travel in our surroundings let's see through this uh, moon quarter until we reach not until but as also we reach and pass over the full moon in capricorn a bit of scatteredness it's all right it's third house gemini constellation was born out of there it's normal to be a bit uh, scattered in that area don't you worry about that We have the card for the third house. Oh, it's mutable air, Prince of Swords. So very natural energies. There is not <clears throat> anything too special going on. You just want to share your thoughts and ideas. You want to share your logic, how you make sense out of things. And you are feeling refreshed in that area. You feel you have a new way or a new passion to communicate and associate your thoughts and ideas, all right? So you just, you feel the same, you feel like normal, but refreshed about your surroundings, okay? And you feel you can come back in and you feel you can connect yourself a bit more, but nothing too special, nothing too different over there because Gemini is mutable air. So having a mutable air in the third house, it's very natural. So let's go into the fourth house over here. Privacy, family, it's like a more private third house, private surroundings. People that you let into your bedroom physically and metaphorically. And it is King of Cups. Okay, so everybody's going through changes. Everybody going into new places, right? So you have to give your emotional grand emotional support to the people places and things on your heart space around you in your house that go into your bedroom physically and metaphorically and that includes yourself okay so give your great emotional support to the ones you love to the ones who support and to the ones that love you and support you give them your great emotional support by creating new ways to feel to connect and to have spiritual purpose behind the spaces you're in. New ways. Be, be, be that in mind. Oh, and actually, this is Gemini and this is Cancer on the third house and on the fourth house. Very natural, very natural. Good flow, good flow of energy. Sorry, guys. A bit, little bit of too much air in the summer, you know. I'm, a, I'm an air boy. It's all right. Let's go. Fifth house. Fifth house deals with the things you pay attention to, the things that you like that pay attention to you, what you entertain, what you like to be entertained by, 
how you express your fixed perspectives and feelings about the world and your creativity and the expression of your individuality in general. So if, you are, if we are creating new ways to travel or seeing new spaces we want to travel into, or we're just realizing that we have that possibility, how will that influence our fifth house? The things we pay attention to, how, how we like people to pay attention to ourselves. Because you might be a painter, but you want people to pay attention to you because you, you, you're a good football player, you know? It depends on your alignments in the fifth house. Oh, whoa, two cards. One is conscious, the other is subconscious. So, on the conscious side, on the external side, on the physical side, we have Venus, the Empress. So, if you pay attention to yourself, or if you pay attention to new spaces, if you pay attention to new spiritual realizations and new possibilities, you can value those, or you can value yourself. You can see yourself as bountiful, you can see yourself as fair, beautiful, and attractive, okay? Or, and then subconsciously, oh, exactly, because sub subconsciously your spirit is detaching or your spirit is detaching from physical things and circumstances that you were paying attention to before. That's why you are finding value in the new ones, because your spirit was tired of whatever physical state, fear, limitations, responsibilities it was paying attention to. Okay, so that's subconscious. Okay, your spirit going away from old earth energies is giving you the ability to, to find new values about yourself, about how you see yourself. Now you might think that others pay attention to you because you're bountiful, because you're beautiful, because you're attractive. Okay, because your spirit is feeling lighter, your spirit is feeling fresher, your spirit is feeling ready to jump into new spaces and that always make us feel good, that always makes us feel that we have the power. We don't need the power because we have it, or we don't need that thing because we have the power to create or attract that thing, all right? So, you are detaching from an old part of your reality that you are paying attention to and it is making you find new values within yourself, the things you pay attention to and the things that you like to entertain. Let's go. Sixth house over here, which means routines, patterns, organization and health uh, in general. How we having the awareness that there is new spaces for us to explore is affecting our routines, our practicality, our patterns, and our health in general, our work as well. How we associate our reality and responsibilities with others as well. Oh, whoa, the whole deck fell. But one card came out first, so no worries. Right, so we have the Four of Cups. So yeah, we are, we are, before we move into those new spaces, we see it's possible to move there, but before we create a routine and pattern around those new feelings, or around those new possibilities, we want to make sense out of those feelings. We want to, to make sure that we are about to change our reality towards the right feelings, okay? But thinking too much, and trying to be too logical about your feelings, about these new spaces, can throw all of your 
uh, abilities away. So be careful with that. Don't exhaust this water, don't exhaust this fuel, but make sure you are giving the right shape and form to those new feelings, to those new spaces, okay? We are thinking and analyzing those new spaces, those new feelings. Let's go into the seventh house, which is your relationships, how you create ways to relate your individuality, right? Let's see how is, how is that reacting to the will of the spirit of the body that we live in to see new places where it can expand. How is that going to affect our relationships? How we relate our individuality? Reversed Six of Cups. So we, we will be wanting to pay too much attention to others' feelings. We want to be around somebody that has authority, power and control over their dreams, illusions and imaginations. But you should be the one that has power, control and that pays a lot of attention to your own feelings to then relate that and attract the right relationships, okay? So, instead of you being instead of you looking out for somebody that does this, you should be the one doing this, okay? Keep that in mind. Pay attention to your own feelings, have power and control, have authority over your own feelings and emotions, okay? Otherwise, that's Hercules, okay? And what Hercules did, Hercules worked the 12 labors of the gods. Hercules, the sun, or whatever other star, he needed to work hard, he needed when he was going through this through the the space we are in right now he, because whatever however he was going through the spaces he was always clashing he was always going through difficult times he was always working and that's what can happen to you if you keep paying too much attention to others feelings and emotions you're going to create hardship not an harmonious ship all right let's go into the eighth house house of uh, deep desires, deep emotions, deep feelings, deep memories, very meaningful memories, very meaningful uh, spiritual preferences that can translate into sexual or food-like preferences and just weird things about yourself that you think it's weird and you don't want to, the world to know about and the world might be like, hey, that's super chill, but you super weird out about that thing about yourself, okay? But we all finding deep within ourselves, even in, in our subconscious realm, in our dreams, a unique, individual, very powerful feeling, emotion, imagination, dream, illusion, nightmare, or spiritual purpose. And it actually makes a lot of sense because we see the possibility to expand. We are like, oh, there is new spaces out there that we can go in and fulfill so it's like wait if I can be the first one or if I can go to a less uh, populated space I can be myself I can let my feelings and emotions my own dreams out I can make I can experience them uh, because here in this realm there's already too much spirits so sometimes we need to fight for space to create our things and to express our things while if you go, if you feel, if you believe there is new spaces, then you can go there and be yourself, express your individuality, and you don't need to fight for space because there is plenty of space because it's a new space. Get it? Let's go into the ninth house. Ah, sorry, y'all. Ah. Okay, we, we, we're going, we're good. Ninth house deals with wisdom, knowledge, uh, wisdom, knowledge, uh, spirituality, lesser forms of spirituality, like religion, uh, cults, organizations around spirituality. And um, there is one thing that I usually say, and but I'm forgetting about it right now when I do this reading about the 9,000. 
But it's like your testimonies. Ah, I know it. It's you expressing whatever deep experiences you went through on the 8th house. Then you make a testimony. Then you make a Bible. Then you express in a creative way the deep travels that you had in the 8th house. That's the 9th house as well. Okay? So let's see how this us being aware of the, these new spaces to expand in, how is that affecting our ability to express and associate our spirituality, wisdom and knowledge? A little bit of scatteredness. All right. You might be talking too much, imaginating too much, and you need to be a bit more focused. Remember, the Ace of Cups, the individuality, the gift is in the the eighth house. So it's time to be a bit more fixed on your own feelings and emotions. Like it was telling you here, this is, this is in reverse, right? So you relating too much or you wanting to connect to others' feelings and emotions is not in your favor, all right? All right, nine of cups. So if we learn how to share, how to express, how to imagine, okay, what it will be like to travel in those new spaces, or if we share our adventures of traveling into those new spaces, we can elevate the connection with ourselves. We can elevate the connection with the things we want to manifest. We can elevate the love for ourselves. We can elevate our internal realm, all right? Let's go into the 10th house. It's your business, your status, how you see yourself via organization and being stable, how you think others see you as stable, as not stable, as medium stable. You might have a lot of money, but you think that the way you make money, others think that the way you make money is weird, and that makes you feel weird. That's 10,000 type of things. And let's see how the possibility of new spaces, the awareness of those new spaces is affecting our 10,000. Status, business, career, building an inf infrastructure is the ace of wands. So we have an individual view, an individual creativity, an individual spiritual perspective, an individual piece of wisdom that can be used to construct a solid team internally or externally that can support you when it's time to create new ways to be stable, when it's time to create new ways to be secure, when it's time to create new ways to attract money, influence, power or attention, all right? And very specially, because the full moon is going to be in Capricorn this moon quarter and the moon and Capricorn was born out of the 10th house. So this full moon in Cap, no matter how hard or how good it is, it will reflect us a unique feeling, a unique imagination, a unique creativity, a unique spiritual belief system that can be used to create a new business. It can be used to create a new infrastructure as in a group of people that you can use them and they can use you to build a new infrastructure, a new security. But you have to make sure those new people or those new fund trusts, those banks you're connecting with, they know and they want to cater to this unique vision, feeling, creativity or spiritual belief. You have to cater to that and the team, whatever association you are initiating right now, they have to cater to that unique feeling, imagination, creativity, and spiritual belief system as well. Okay, let's go into the 11th house. Your associations, how you share the world, your knowledge, how you look, how you show others that you are sturdy, organized, that you can fly and you can move fast as well. Science, occultism, numerology, gematria, uh, things that make you, you want to create answers for those things, but the more answers you have, the more questions you have, things like that, you know? Let's see how we having the awareness, we knowing that right now it's possible to expand to new places, spaces and places, palaces, 
okay? How is that affecting our ability to associate our mind and our individuality with the world? Reversed Four of Pentacles, okay? So that might lead us into thinking too much, trying to get everything perfect and everything aligned, making everything clean, making everything shiny, making everything stable and proper and well-constructed, but we are going into new times. We are going into new spaces. So you can't be as precise, you can't be as exi as, uh, as um, you can't expect too much out of those asso associations because everybody is in a new space. So you can't be expecting that they or you have everything figured out. No, because we are creating those new spaces that we gonna associate with, with an, a, a new unique feeling. So you can't expect everything sturdy, everything complete and everything stable right now. No, it's not in your favor. You're thinking too logically. You only want to go into shapes and forms that are already safe. But those are not working right now. That's why you're going into new spaces. That's why we're creating infrastructure and business out of unique feelings and new creative ideas. Because those old creative ideas ain't working no more. All right. So you have to lighten up. You have to be a bit more spiritual, a bit more into your creativity, a bit more into your feelings, understand, try to understand and tolerate other circumstances as well. And don't share and associate your frustration when this stability and practicality is not seen in your associations because everybody is going into a new space including you, so you might not be stable in how you associate yourself, how you share knowledge, how you share, how you maintain your individuality protected. You might not be doing that right now. And you, you want others to be like that. That makes no sense, okay? So make sure you lighten up, make sure you believe in all possibilities, because this Four of Pentacles is basically the opposite of all possibilities. Is you, is you creating one possibility out of all possibilities. And right now, we need to be a bit more open, okay? Because you might reject certain opportunities because they don't fit into that specific form. And you'll be like, I want a triangle. And it's like, everything in front of you is golden, but in not triangles. So you'll be like, then I don't want it. And then you miss an opportunity, all right? Don't be like that. Lastly, but not least, we go into the 12th house, dreams, illusions, imaginations, the way you share and receive your feelings and other feelings. So how is the fact that we right now know and feel uh, that uh, we know and feel connected to the possibility that there is new spaces outside to expand with? How is that affecting our spirituality? Usually I say that the 12th house is us seeing our, uh, everything that we went through in one perspective, how is those new spaces, those new possibilities affecting our spirituality, our creativity, and how we associate our emotions and feelings, all right? Dreams and illusions. Saturn, okay, the world. That means we have a lot of things going on. We are ending, we are completing a cycle, okay? We can look back and learn many things, we can feel higher, we can feel lower, but we feel that we are completing a cycle. The moon is fulfilling. Yeah, we are completing a cycle. So we can start a new one in the end. All right. But this is a great power, a great, a great opportunity to manifest people, places and things that resonate with your 12th house. It's a great time to learn about life, to learn about your life by reflecting on your 12th house. And you can go into that new space and create a world there because Saturn represents the world. It's even written in there, right? So you can, you can create your own world in those new spaces if you know how to be stable, if you know how to create and express your limits and boundaries, okay? And that's it. That's all for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this reading. Remember, 
you can ask a reading just like this for yourself you can ask a reading like this plus dragon oracles you can request a venus and mars reading sun moon and rising reading uh, and you can have other tarot services readings as well just check my ig and ask me for every whatever reading you're interested to in i mean until the next time as a tarot philosopher surfing out enjoy yourself